uh, Neen Muchi. I'm from uh, Bay St. George. Uh, my relatives came from uh, Flat Bay area, but really all over Mi'kmaq, uh, my ancestors are. Our upbringing was fantastic, 12 brothers and sisters. You know, we, uh, we played and fought and got along well together, seven brothers and five sisters. As we grew up, you know, we, we got to go help with the gardens or help with the hunting, with the fishing, you know, and dad would always make it fun and so it didn't seem like it was work. We never thought that we were poor because my dad was such a great provider, but there was poorer families around us, you know? So that made us feel like, but there was always the helping, you know, and, and, and giving and sharing that, uh, that happened in the community. We never grew up involved in Mi'kmaq culture. In fact, our ancestors had to deny who they were just to be able to have a, a better life for themselves and their families. I can't deny my ancestors from, uh, from Ireland, you know, and my French ancestry. Predominantly, you know, on my mom's side and on my dad's side was, was Mi'kmaq. It was probably when I was about 18 years old, you know, that we were allowed to, to even say or admit who, who we were as a people and then to try to figure out what that meant. We're still in recovery, you know. We're still trying to figure out who we are. We don't have a 100% Mi'kmaq person here on the island, I don't think. During my time in the Canadian Armed Forces, I got involved with a lot of incredible teachers and elders on the reserves and in, in the communities and uh, they saw something in me that I really didn't see in myself. They helped mentor me and, and develop me to become responsible for ceremonies and uh, environment for our people, which is really hard to blend coming back home because back home they were also recovering, you know, uh, what it was to be Mi'kmaq and, and been a, a wonderful journey and it still continues. The Mi'kmaq were a proud, honorable people. We're um, resilient people, but we we're a hurt people. Here uh, on the island, uh, first contact for, for our, our relatives, uh, the Beatuk or the Beatuk people, they were, they were killed off. For the Mi'kmaq people that were left behind, they had to either move back to Atlantic Canada uh, regions or they had to assimilate into the, the, the culture of the newcomers. So it's a really, really difficult time for us, but we're trying. We're trying to do this in respect to uh, all the other oh, atrocities, the missing and murdered uh, Aboriginal women, which is still going on today. Uh, the struggles between communities for, for power and money. A lot of the things that take us away from really what our true identity should be. We need help, we need strong leadership, we, we need prayers. We're not that far along our journey of recovery yet. My hope is in the children. Uh, there's more children dancing, learning the language, coming to ceremonies, um, are interested, you know, in, in, in all the aspects of our culture. I've got a lot of hope that we will be able to uh, fish and hunt and sustain our, ourselves and decisions will be made by our leadership with consideration of the seven generations that are yet to come. And if we can grasp that and those things, that I think that we will uh, succeed in, in handing on a far better community than the one we inherited.